Hey Rare, again, I'm really milking this floor plan um, for all it's worth. I'd like to talk with you for a moment about uh, exhaust and supply dilution air from outside. I have a video about why ERVs are way smarter for almost everyone than HRVs are. I just found out that the city of Vancouver actually requires in their code HRVs instead of ERVs. I think that's dumb. And if anybody out there is from Vancouver, especially from the building department, please call me. Let's have a, a chat about that because uh, I think that's a big mistake. It's, it's damp there. Um, and so you start any conversation about dilution air with a standard. And I don't particularly give a damn which standard uh, we are using. If you are a building science corporation follower and you're like, ashtray 62.2 is no good, um, I don't really have much sympathy for that argument. I think it's silly. That, pick a number and then let's just go from there. So ASHRAE 62.2 is a standard that almost everybody, except for the people I just mentioned, agree is a good place to start for target dilution air. Dilution air, remember, is air that we're bringing in from outside into the house to dilute the pollution that's happening in here because we are polluters. If you are going to live in a house, it's going to be polluted because we're gross. So you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need supply air and you're gonna need exhaust. And the beautiful thing about something like an ERV, which uh, you can see on this channel, ERVs from Brone, from Renew Air. Of course, if you're familiar with Matt Reisinger's channel, you've seen Zender, which is a Ferrari kind of a model. And by the way, be careful about the oversizing. They like to, to make sure that they've got plenty of capacity on those things. Um, so know how much you're looking for before you call somebody like that and say, hey, which one should I get? Because of course they're gonna say the biggest one. Um, so supply and exhaust is what we're looking at. And in an ERV situation, like the ones I just mentioned, it's balanced. You're taking air out of the house, exhaust, and you're supplying air too in equal measure. Some of them, like the Broen AI series, makes it really easy to do that. You don't have to have any tools to set it up. You say, I want 120 CFM going out and 130 coming in. And it just says, okay, great, I'll do that. And it tests it twice a second in the case of the AI series. Uh, in other cases, you have to commission, and I've got a video on screen right now about how that commissioning process works. But what we wanna do is use ASHRAE 62.2, and I have a video that I'm linking on screen now about how to calculate it. It's not very pretty, it's complicated, but there is a, a calculator online called Red Calc that I use all the time to get this information. That'll tell you a number. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that it's 105 CFM, continuous. Every minute of every day, you're gonna bring 105 cubic feet of air from outside into the house. Now, if this house is 3,000 square feet with 10 foot ceilings, that's 30,000 cubic feet. We divide that by 60 to get 500 uh, cubic feet. That is how many cubic feet it would take to have one air cleaning per hour. So 105 CFM would give me one air cleaning every five hours instead. That's good. I don't want to replace all the air on my house once an hour. That would be totally insane. So I take that 105 CFM and I'm like, great, I'm gonna put that, put a pin in that. And I'm gonna say, great, first of all, that's a nice target to have. I wanna be able to turn my ERV down and up from there. So I do not take that number and buy 105 CFM or 110 CFM C, uh, ERV. I'm gonna buy something like 130 at the minimum, because I wanna be able to turn it up in party mode or when I have people over who I think might be sick, um, which we just got out of COVID and I was doing that a lot. I was boosting my ERV. So I put a pin in that and I also now do uh, checking on the house's exhaust locations. So this bathroom is a perfect layout. I've got the door here. I've got the toilet between the door and the shower. I'm gonna put my exhaust right there in that specific corner, not over here because the air will come in under the door and make a beeline for this exhaust port. And if you have not seen this happen in real life, it's hard to imagine that air actually follows a specific path, but I've literally seen air come into a house and take a 90 degree turn to rush toward the blower door that I've got set up somewhere else. So there is that. This is 25 CFM for that. I also have a shower over here. and I put it in that corner so that it grabs as much steam as possible in the shower before it goes out. If I was to make a mistake and put that exhaust port in the middle of the bathroom, which is what most builders do with bath fans, then I would have to up my fan 
power because you only have two things to play with. You have fan power or geometry. Using geometry to get what you want is a great thing to do. It's much more elegant, it's much more energy efficient. So we put it inside the shower, we pull 25. We also have a powder in this case. And so we have to have another one right here and we're gonna pull 15 out of that powder. By the way, these numbers are based both in advice that I got and also in my actual experience having built this house and installed exactly this. If you put your exhaust port there in the shower, the vanity here will never fog up. The mirror will stay clear forever and ever. Think of how many hotels you've stayed in where that's not the case. Isn't that crazy? Engineers designed that. I used to play piano for ballerinas for a living. You might be just a regular homeowner watching this getting smarter than 90% of the building professionals out there about this stuff. Crazy. So we also have a couple other places uh, that are important to consider. This closet right here, I have described in other videos about this floor plan, um, has no load. That room has no exterior walls. It has a floor that has no exposed perimeter. It might be under an attic, but this, but it's got no windows in it. And the amount of load that an attic insulation is going to impose on it is like not a lot. So it's not going to bleed a lot of heat. Therefore, there will not be a vent to deliver heating and cooling in this closet. So it might just get really stale in there. So we have a choice. We can either put fresh air only into that room, which I would be able to do because I built a totally separately ducted ERV supply and exhaust system into my house. I do not advise that actually having done it. Uh, I think it's much more um, economical, affordable, quick, easy to just dump the fresh air from your ERV straight into the return side of your air handler right before the filter. That way you comes in through a filter, you immediately put it through another filter and now it's super clean, it's mixed, it's conditioned and it can go into the house. So let's put another exhaust into that closet right there and we'll call that a 15. We have this storage space right here, which has no window. It does have this front wall. It's got a wall that's shared with the garage. It has a small perimeter floor and it's got a small load on the, the ceiling. Probably it would be smarter when you get the manual J report back and it says that you need to deliver five CFM to that room. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna deliver zero CFM to that room, at which point we might wanna put an exhaust in there. So let's put an exhaust. Actually, you know what? Here, here's the rule that you want to follow. If the, the door, let's put the door right here. If the door is there, then you want to go catty corner to the door. So we want to pull as much air as possible through the room like a train to grab as much as possible around the room before it leaves. So if you put it right inside the door, it would just boop and go outside and none of the air in here would get circulated. And that's the whole point basically. So let's call this one 25, just for the sake of argument. Um, and then laundry, if you're the kind of person, and I, I am not the kind of person, but if you are that wants to have an exhaust in the laundry, particularly if, since there's no window marked in that room, it might have also a very low load, we could put an exhaust in there, or at least you could have the option. And again, door is here, boom. 25. Okay, so now let's do our count. We got 25, 50, 75, 100, plus 15, plus 15 is 130. So we're not going to use 105 anymore. It's nice to know we're going to use 130 CFM as our continuous. Then we would boost from there. So now I'm not shopping for 130 CFM. ERV, I'm shopping for 160 CFM ERV so that I can have that room to boost up. So this is my process for going through ventilation uh, calculations. I hope that this has been helpful. Again, remember RedCalc is a great online tool. <coughs> I'm linking to the tools that I use, the calculators in the video notes below. So you can check those out there yourself. Uh, if you have comments or questions or other ways that you do it, which like I'm not the only guy out there doing this, I'm one of the only people like talking about it on a regular basis on YouTube. So if you're out there and you have different ideas, please, I would love to hear them. If I have an issue with them, then we'll have a discussion about it. And I think that that's what this is all about. So please do make sure to uh, make your voice heard if you have ideas or our questions. Uh, like and subscribe, as always, it'd be great. Share the video with your friends and family. Don't let them just 
go into this half baked and pick up duck size and like who knows what's going on. By the way, there are a lot of contractors out there doing that too. So share away. Tune in next time. Mm-hmm.